Another application of standard deviation is to calculate the coefficient of variation. This is to address the issue of relative degree of variability of different data sets. So what does this mean? Let's say you want to buy a pair of shoes that cost around $100. You do a survey of the prices and you find that the shops sell it at a mean price of $100 with a standard deviation of $2. You probably aren't too concerned about getting the best deal as the variation in prices is not that great. Let's say you want to buy 20 pairs of socks. The mean price for each pair is $5 and has the same standard deviation of $2 as the shoes. Now, would you be more inclined to shop around to get the best price for the same pair of socks? Probably so. The lesson here is, even though both products have the same standard deviation of $2, the relative effect of the deviation is different for both. To resolve this, a relative measure of dispersion, like the coefficient of variation, can be helpful. This is a measure of the deviation per unit of mean and is calculated by dividing the standard deviation with the mean. So calculating the coefficient of variation for each product, we get a value of 0.02 for shoes and 0.4 for socks. This implies that the relative variation of the price of socks is higher. In evaluating returns, deviation is associated with risk and the mean is the expected return. So coefficient of variance can be a measure of the risk per unit of return. Let's replace the shoes example with a comparison of the returns of stock A versus stock B. Stock B is deemed as more risky than stock A, as it has a higher coefficient of variation. So as you can see, even though both have the same standard deviation, the relative risk level of each stock can be vastly different. The Sharpe ratio is the inverse of the coefficient of variation. It measures the return per unit of risk. By definition, the Sharpe ratio is the excess return per unit of risk, so we have to subtract the risk-free rate to find the excess return. In evaluating investment options, more returns and less risk is desirable, so you would want to choose those with higher Sharpe ratios. Let's conclude this lesson with an exercise. As an analyst, you're presented with the mean and standard deviation of the monthly returns of T-bills and the S&P 500 for the past 10 years. Calculate the coefficient of variation and Sharpe ratio for both of them. You may use the T-bill rate to represent the risk-free rate. Pause the video now to work out the answers. And we're back. Working out the figures should be a straightforward application of the formulas. Take note that the returns of the T-bills are used as the risk-free rate. This is often the case. If in the exam you're not given a risk-free rate, but the T-bill rate is shown, you may use the T-bill rate as the risk-free rate. So, plugging in the figures, we get a coefficient of variation of 1.32 for T-bills versus 5.58 for S&P 500. We can infer that T-bills are the less risky of the two, given that the variance per unit return is lower. In comparing the Sharpe ratio, the S&P 500 gives a higher risk adjustment return than T-bills because it has a higher ratio. Do note that Sharpe ratio can be negative if the average return of the asset is lower than the risk-free rate. If that's the case, then the risk-adjusted return of that asset will be lower than T-bills. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.